I want to welcome everybody back to the channel here. It seems to be the well, theme of the week to roll out a highly on video. It's what seems to make sense to me right now. Um, you'll evolve in your stock market application over over the time, and and your application will will change. It will evolve, and it will become more mature, I guess, as you um, learn to um, deploy different uh, levels of application uh, in your investing thesis. But I, I think there's a lot of people, myself included as well, to provide as updated of information. Been a couple updates this week worth noting. Uh, so I do want to roll those out. But before we get started, I, I do want to go ahead and jump in. I'll disclose my position to you guys. I've, I've been a little bit uh, hesitant to do that just based on the previous few months of action uh, like a falling knife. And I didn't want my message to be misconstrued in that an, an edu uneducated and ill-prepared investor may take my information and uh, and deploy capital on what what has been kind of a falling knife, really, and and so I've been hesitant in doing that. I think here basing uh, here we're we're due for our um, quadruple retest of the lows here, um, which sometimes that happens. But I, I'm I'm fairly confident to know that as we move up from these levels, um, it will be uh, safe to to disclose what I'm thinking with my current position and where we are. Um, why I'll dissolve away one of my strategies, um, which has been uh, collecting some uh, cash secured put premium over the last couple months. I've, I've done very, very well with that. Uh, had a couple contracts put to me. I've had about, oh, at least a half a dozen or so that uh, expired worthless, which was great. I was able to collect the premium on those. So, you know, appreciate you guys tuning in with me on a Sunday for a cup of joe and talk about some highly on. So I do want to jump in here, kind of explain, and there was a, a few restrictions within the account. So what I'll do is I'll share this via screenshot when I edit this video out. So I'm kicking over and, and actually walking through what will be the sc screenshot um, to start here with the taxable brokerage account. This was uh, something that I started simultaneously. So you'll see on the bottom end where I started accumulating shares again for the second time. You guys remember uh, I did liquidate the position at 26 and I, I find it ironic how people come on and they're like, well, if you were bullish on the company, um, why did you sell out of the company? I, I fail to see the comparison in that. That was the decision that I made. Um, this, this game is about money. And you're going to be wrong and you're going to be right sometimes, but second guessing yourself on a decision that you've made uh, on what I considered to be uh, entering into a fairly dark period for the stock. And it has been. It's been a dark period for the stock as they've um, done a lot of things to build toward that production. But it's very, very clear to me that this company is not going to get uh, due credit until they start to turn back some uh, some profit. And all is fair in, in love and war. Uh, that is a, a fairly um, uh, commonplace expectation of a company, not uh, equally distributed across companies as criteria sometimes to, to get some movement in the stock price. But um, Hylion is, is being run through the rigor uh, as far as um, making sure that um, – um, you know that, that that earnings are on the horizon, and then and then they'll be given due credit for that um, when those orders start to come in. But this is a accumulated historical going back since November of 2020. Here you can see uh, basically an average of about 200, as much as you know for the majority of these blocks, 100 share blocks. Very very simple. Very, very clean. But uh, what you can see here, uh, the accumulation phase started at about $19.07 in this particular account. Uh, and as we've digressed down, we've really just kind of caught the egg as we've thrown it up in the air. And, and I use the analogy, trying to catch that egg as softly as you can as it comes down without breaking the egg. But you can see here a few injects b b below 10 um, my my average cost basis right now on an aggregate here, so you guys don't have to do the math, is about twelve dollars and forty cents. So that's just where we are. Some are better than that. Uh, some are, are are well north of that. I mean, that's fine. You know the 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 ones that are holding the bag a little bit more heavy on Hylion, I would just say that it's just going to take more time to counterbalance um, the deep hole that's been dug here. That that's all. And and. 
you know, if, if it's money that's needed, um, then, then those deliberations should have occurred before entering into a stock like this in the first place. But um, th th this is of interest to any investor out there that will understand how I've deployed capital over the time uh, since November here, buying at 19. And then as the stock has come down, you know, 1193s, some buys here in the, the, the 12s, the 14, 15, 12, 13, 11s, right? So in, in every single dollar increment as we've digressed down, and this is the recent purchase here, uh, as early as, um, well, these were uh, sh shares assigned on a uh, cash secured put. So I, I got put 500 at a cost basis of 11. So we missed out a little bit on that um, being put those shares. I, I wrote that contract a little too aggressively and that's fine. Um, the same day I bought 500 shares the day before. Um, actually, this was the same day, expiry the same day. And I bought the shares the day before I knew these were going to get put to me. I, I had no problem with that. And then two days before that at 957. So um, here we are, the stock is trading around the same amount that we're discussing at the time of this video. And I thought that's why I thought it timely to put this out because I, I, I do appreciate the highly on coverage across the YouTube community. I think sometimes what it misses is just a, a regurgitation of uh, news that uh, comes to a head. It seems like weekly now with the company, that's going to change. Um, but I, I want to see something a little bit more granular that can maybe help those uh, bag holders out there that do hold this company and maybe losing a little bit of conviction, maybe get a little bit frustrated with the stock action and price as of now. Uh, and maybe I can put some people at ease a little bit in understanding that, um, you know, I'm down a little bit in the position anyway, a little bit relatively speaking, as far as I'm concerned. I, I've already um, double dipped on this stock down into some deep, deep water. I, I don't consider this uh, deep, deep, deep water. Um, I've taken stocks into uh, much deeper stocks, uh, water than this, uh, and, and come out of it a, a winner. And, and that's really the pedigree where, you know, very, very few are, are willing to venture in stock market investing is, is probably where the greatest amount of profits are going to be had, to be honest with you. And uh, you can see here the total losses range from as much as 50% here on this small 200 share block, right? And, and, and as little as a couple percent here on some of these recent buys. I'm actually up here because I got a good entry here at 930 uh, on the most recent shares I bought at 500. And, and as the stock starts to appreciate in value, then each of these small entities or blocks of shareholds uh, will increase in value and we'll, we'll get these percentages to turn back to the black. And that's just the deliberation that needs to happen. As we move down to my account, my personal account, this is a, a, a little less uh, of a uh, of a of a an indication of how many buys I've made, a and this is a little bit different. I want to differentiate between the the account that we just covered, which is a taxable brokerage account, which I have the freedom to uh, put money in at any time. This is a little different. I'm a little bit more uh, careful. I, I do try to balance the um, the highly on risk that we're taking within the portfolio um, by leveraging in, uh, in uh, strategic uh, blocks of share, which is indicated here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen injects. Just in this portfolio alone, or just in this account. So you can kind of see here buys from 20 uh, here on this 300 share block. And that was probably an ill-advised buy. Uh, you know, it's easy to second guess now. And I, I certainly will have people that are second guessing uh, the decisions that I'm disclosing to you now. That's totally fine. I, I put these out to strike up discussion. Uh, on highly on and then and then some of my most recent buys here I'm, I'm actually up in this position which is ironic you know um there was a stock buy there's a 818 entry geez i didn't even remember the stock getting down that low but there's a nice 200 share block uh from back in april of this year that uh, got down to 818 right so pretty small investment to 200 shares is actually up 230 dollars so yay i'm up 15 percent in that one small block and and, and I, I say that this is kind of a you know kind of a funny poke fun at the stock a little bit but you know i, I do look at each one of these as as standalone entities when you look at the stock share bulk and and i'll disclose that to you guys as well after we do these individual accounts 
you know, it's 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 important to to really understand the granular nature of how I look at these. Um, I'm looking to accumulate share base in the company. I'm not I'm not looking to justify my share base in the company based on my day to day monitoring of the stock price. And I really hope that resonates with people. It, it, it's, it's irrelevant at this point. I've said this many, many times and there's haters of the stock and there's lovers of this stock. I, I just think either way, it, it's not going to be the nature of how much hate we put into this or how much love we put into this. The stock is going to do what the stock is going to do sometimes disconnected from what the company is doing and other times lockstep aligned with what the company is doing. And I think once there's some projected numbers on the books and we start to get a little bit of historical precedence surrounding this company, I, I think it's it's really going to start to fall in line with a little bit more predictability. Uh, the, the, the technical and fundamental analysis that we're able to do on this will be by nature of the fact that we have some level of precedence to apply to the company. And finally, we'll cruise down to the other account here. Um, this is the, the, the second uh, Roth IRA account. So I own these in a big capacity in three accounts. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So a couple more blocks of buys within this account here. And this is uh, same strategy, uh, a couple hundred share blocks, as many as 300 at a time. You can see here, this is a, a 300 share buy at 853, um, which was obviously a nice. Um, nice inject into the companies. I mean, I could sell 300 shares right now and actually uh, render these profits. Now, obviously, it'll be first in, first out shares, right? It's going to take it off of the bulk of the position. That's fine. But I'm actually up here 10% in these, in these shares that were bought here rock bottom. Okay. Here's one that at $9. I'm obviously up just up fractionally in that. Um, here's another 100 share buy at 819. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't want to um, portray that it's a buy the stock until you eventually get it right. What I want this to be perceived as is a long term, almost going on a year accumulation of a base position in a company that I have conviction on. Yes. Uh, and also, how I've gone about I've gone about doing this. Um, I didn't take twenty five grand and dump it on the stock. You know, if the odds are any indication of of how difficult this company has been to to, to per se catch the bottom, uh, you you can you can discern from the multiple injects that I've demonstrated to you guys through through this video that that would have been impossible to do. Right. Um, what I'm uh, displaying to you guys is possible for anybody to do. Take a, a disciplined, strategic, uh, you know, basing uh, position, you know, buy on the down days. Every single one of these buys probably came on a down day. Um, and, and really where some of these shares were, you know, up in the 20 range, uh, 300, you can kind of see here as the price has come back on us a little bit um, that we've been able to a accumulate a nice position in the shares. And, th and then finally, the actual position in the company. And let me demonstrate for you guys here. I've just put a snapshot on here and I, I wanted to be as careful as I could and also as revealing as I could. I, I think there's a lot of people that will appreciate this. This is this is real money. Um, this is real. This is my position right now sitting on 9,450 shares. There's a few people in the community here that uh, represent a, a significantly larger position than this. I want to put this into context uh, for a retail investor. This is an enormous position. Quite frankly, if I was going to disclose to you guys this, probably a little outside of my risk tolerance. However, the buffer and the mitigating factor in Hylion is, in fact, the due diligence that I've done and the conviction that I have in this company that over the longer term, um, this company will, will really provide some incredible rewards for shareholders that got in uh, when, when the share price was uh, where it is now. So there's the total position here. I'm not going to spend time during this video getting into the um, contracts that I have. I will just disclose that I do have 20 leaps contracts, uh, both at the 10 and 1250 uh, strikes for 2023. So you guys that are options folks, I do have those. 
Uh, I did enter back into another couple put premium blocks as well. Um, and, and they're pretty aggressively written. If those get put to me, I'll, I'll be surprised. I really will. But nonetheless, I'll buy the shares. I have no problem with that. Um, lots of pay dirt uh, setting aside. Uh, and lots to money to work here, obviously, at the time of, of this video here at about 88000 That really, at this point, is kind of irrelevant. I'm much more interested in the 9450. So, you know, for you guys that are working on 500, 1,000 share positions, th 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 those are big positions, no doubt. And uh, I want to make sure that you guys understand fully uh, that for a retail investor, that can make a huge difference in your life, huge financial boost to the bottom line really give you a nice boost in the company. So I hope you guys have enjoyed working in through the accounts with me and, and actually understanding um, my position, uh, my conviction through the bullish position that I've just disclosed to you guys. Uh, I do want to talk about a couple things that have rolled out. The uh, FEV news is a huge. And, you know, it's interesting to me covering highly on how much positive news has come through on the company. I think they're firing all, on all cylinders. I, I think the news has just been fantastic. I, I just cannot um, discredit the move here by signing a binding agreement with FEV. They are going to help them um, on the logistics side. Uh, fine-tune these products that they're looking to roll out mass scale um, by nature of their uh, expansion of their plant. Um, this is a German-based company, but they are domiciled here in Auburn, Mills, uh, Auburn Hills, Michigan, my old stomping ground. So kind of exciting stuff in, in, in that they're looking to really perfect that product before they roll it out mass scale. And you, you just... You cannot appreciate the level of, of granular detail down to the last bolt, down to the last torque spec, and down to the last um, standard across the board. Lots, lots of standards that, that need to be met. Um, the engineering standards, the electrical standards, making sure that the uh, products and the procedures, uh, and that's the key really, is if we're going to ramp up to mass scale, uh, pr the, that the procedures are scrutinized to understand that the workers have a very, very, um, very solidified best work practice in place before they start to put some of these procedures to work to ramp up production. Because if you have one kink in the armor, one kink in the production uh, of said products, you're going to have a problem. And FEV, from what I understand, if you look at the board of directors of these folks, it's pretty impressive. I, I can't pronounce a lot of their last names, but a lot of doctors, uh, lots of engineers, a uh, lot of think tanks, man. And and um, I'm not one of them. Uh, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy out there. Uh, you know, when you invest in these companies, you really are investing in, in some of the uh, intellectual property. You're investing in the perfection and application Application and and the, the 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 patents that have already been issued. And they've got a phenomenal idea. Now they need to take this idea. They need to perfect it, and they need to make sure that they can ramp up um, their uh, large scale operation going forward. And I, I think the partnership at FEV. If you guys are not part of my Facebook group, um, you guys need to join the Facebook group. The uh, the code word to get into the group is empowered. OK, I would suggest that you do the quick tutorial and agree that you're not going to spam the group, but jump in there because I share those um, articles as they come out. I've been kind of on a, a trip the last couple months uh, just sharing highly on videos in the Facebook group or highly on uh, articles that come out because uh, I, I think those good articles when they when they come out and the stock again gets gets no credit i'm i'm in a, uh, a very interesting phase here in that um, we're building up pressure behind the dam and i think as long as they keep on coming out with positive information i don't need that substantiation in the stock right now because it'll eventually come when you least expect it that's just how the stock market works if you expect certain results on a certain date or a certain time you will most likely be um, disappointed. <laughs> okay. So the, the, the idea here for those folks that have been with me for this video and they've reviewed my position and they've understood my mental 
patience with, with this, which I'm not a patient guy. So it, it's amazing to me having to deploy an attribute that will be absolutely necessary to render the maximum profits on this uh, highly on position. There, there, there's no doubt in my mind, no doubt. The only way that you're going to realize this is not to be trading in and out of the stock. That is an absolute no-go. If you don't want to invest in the company, Please tell me why. I'd love to strike up a discussion in the in the um, in the thread here in the comment section about what what you're seeing because I'm not I'm not seeing a whole lot. My conviction runs fairly deep on the bullish side, but I'm always open to engage in a smart bear uh, conversation. That is a smart uh, conversation on on what the bulls of this company could be missing in way of their future prospects going forward. Now, the last thing I will mention is the most recent SEC submission with regard to some clarification on their pre-order posture as a company. And, and I found this to be, um, qu quite frankly, I read it the first time I was alarmed. And, and my first instinct was, oh my goodness, this, this might not be good. Now I've had some discussions behind the scene on this interpretive and the way I look at this is is very simple and I've I've changed my my thought process on why Hylion has done this and I I this is my personal opinion okay um and and I know there's some people that say well does this mean that agility can cancel their thousand uh, truck pre-order the answer is yes the answer is yes they can Okay. And I've always kind of interpreted based on different elements of what I've been able to glean from publicly disseminated information on what those pre orders meant. I've seen the word binding, you know, whether or not there was a penalty attached with uh, whether or not the company would um, uh, renege on their pre order to Hylion. And I've had time to interpret the SEC submission, and, and here's my consensus on it. The news is bullish, and here's why. And the news is bullish because I think there's a few things that if you read between the lines on the submission, I, I think you can extrapolate that. There is so much interest in the product that they don't want to see people that are very interested in the product being punished by nature of their place in line. Okay. So you have to figure that they, they don't have the production capability to scale up to thousands and thousands of orders. Okay. Will they? Yes. Yes. They're building out that. They're doing the quality control mechanisms right now, which makes perfect sense to me. Um, I'm, I'm an ISO 9000 certified, so I'm a big procedure guy. Okay. If you have a kink in the procedure, you could be turning out thousands of units um, erroneously if you don't have those proper checks and balances in place on the onset to codify those procedures for when your product comes off the end of the line and it goes to what I hope to be a hot test at the end of the line, um, that the product it, it has a very, very defined procedure to get to that hot, hot test uh, and that the hot test renders a predictable result. OK, in that they know down to the science, what type of uh, fuel economy that they're going to get out of the product, how long is there any degradation of the product when it gets put into real life application? What is the maintenance protocol of said products, etc.? All those questions will be answered uh, in the future, but you have to have a defined process in place to be able to 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 answer those questions. So back to my point about the SEC submission, I think that by highly on coming out and saying that there will be no penalty, there will be no uh, 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 penalty for cancellation, there will be nothing. If you put a pre-order in with highly on, that will be uh, honored in the time that is necessary and needed to get to that specific order. Now, dare I say this does mean a first come, first serve basis. And we have to go to multiple interviews across the social media landscape to pull this information and determine that there might be a groundswell of interest in this product um, that we do not know of. Alluded to, yes, by the most current interviews that are turned out by Thomas Healy, where he talks about 
the interest in the Hypertruck ERX Innovation Council. He talked about there being more players in the industry that were really, really hungry for the solution and wanted to be part of the solution, wanted to be part of the um, uh, techn techn technology refinement process. And that's where the 10 um, Innovation Council members will play a critical part in basically writing the technology for Hylion, right? The, I, I've completely changed my mindset in thinking that Hylion has to get on the phone and sell people on this product. I'm so removed of that very elementary opinion on Hylion. I think we're so far advanced to that. And I will ask Thomas Healy about this if he comes on. Quite quite simply, could you have anticipated the acceptance uh, by big industry in 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 the way that you've declared through interviews? That um, could you have could you have forecasted that? In, in other words, it doesn't sound like it's yes. Now the bottom line details have to be there, like the cost savings, the integration off of the OEM. It all has to make sense. Okay, the the, the industry is not going to stretch beyond a point where they're taking a chance. Everything has to be um, justifiable in the numbers on the bottom before they're even going to commit to that. I think all that's done. I think that courtship is behind us. I think the Innovation Council it, it is in fact indicative of that courtship being completed. And now we're moving on to a multi-phase FEV partnership right? ERX Innovation Council demo units being rolled out so the, the, the product itself can be rolled down the road simultaneously while the agreement between Hylion and FEV take hold, okay? And they can start to integrate these process improvements on the fly real time data comes back you have a, a catcher <laughs> that, that's able to take said information remember that hylion is also a technology company and that this data is retainable and uh, you can act upon said data that's being collected in the cloud fev is going to help with that right and that those data points can be submitted on schedule with the innovation council as they sit across the round table and start to identify action items to take and just streamline and start to knock boom 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 each of these action items off as the hylion product starts to ramp up toward mass production right it, it, it's going to be amazing because the innovation council is going to be the beneficiary of being around the round table that can be really in the trenches right in the granular details of how they're looking to to, to turn out this this product and who's going to be more uh, more apt to um, really substantiate the product for their own fleets than the fleets themselves in, in other words these members of the innovation council that represent this hundred thousand uh, tractor trailer fleet right they're going to know exactly where the status quo is when they start the innovation council and where potentially this product is going to be as far as the perfect fine-tuned product when and how they end up uh, scaling up and and taking receipt of those larger orders i think thousand uh, truck orders are going to be commonplace right but they're not going to be commonplace until they understand that one the process improvements are integrated that the mass scale capacity is there. It's going to take some time to get that uh, plant capacity up to where they think that they can get it. Now, remember, the OEMs play a big part in this, okay? It, don't, don't envision Hylion as being a one-hub, one-stop shop for the integration of the Hypertruck ERX. It doesn't work that way, okay? The OEMs, specifically the OEM hubs, play the biggest part in using strategic locations around the U.S., this is the element of Hylion of, that, that speaks to my conviction, is the existing infrastructure that's already there, okay? I, the, one of the most telling examples that I just heard on a recent interview with Thomas Healy, he talked about one of the, one of the toughest things to negotiate is actually truckers hitting deer on the road. It knocks a bumper off. Okay, now what do you do? Is it just as easy as bolting the bumper back on? No, that has to go to a repair facility, whether it be with Peterbilt or whether it be with Volvo, whether whether it be with any of the others, Freightliner. It has to go to an authorized 
uh, repair facility for something as small as a bumper, right? Hylion is already integrated with those uh, networks, okay? So we talk fueling, fueling, fueling all the time, which Hylion has access to, right? But we forget sometimes that trucks just don't go out on the road and operate hunky-dory all the time. It's those contingencies that I believe that Hylion is the most prepared to meet the demands and rigors of trucking, right? It, it, than, than any other company and, and no other company is being held to that scrutiny right now. Whereas if some of these injects start to come in on the actual demo side of the house, it's going to be say, hey, we've got an inject here. How quickly did we respond to said inject? And how quickly were we able to get that truck back out on the road and incur the least amount of downtime uh, when that inject happened? And they will. They will happen. It, it, it's it's um it's naive to think that they won't happen, and I think the individuals in industry it, it, to to best um, satisfy that expected need is industry themselves. So good on Hylion for actually partnering with industry rather than trying to invent a whole nother industry out of thin air. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. A little shorter this time on my Hylion video. We stayed around 30 minutes this time, but if you do enjoy the information, we'll be closely monitoring the August uh, report is coming up August 11. They do report. If you're interested in that, you got to go over to Hylion.com. You got to register for the conference call. I'm already registered. Registered. I will not roll that out through the Independent Investor Channel. I think you could just as easily plug yourself into that. That's totally fine. We do have a request in to still have Thomas Healy on the channel as a guest. Look forward to that. It's an open door policy. I have no problem. Uh, I will be a shareholder in this company next week as well as next year. So my conviction remains the same, and I would expect that these videos are rolled out to maybe help solidify yours, okay? Right now, every Hylion investor in the stock has been wrong, okay? But we don't substantiate our position in stock market investing and investing in a good company with the prospects that, that Hylion does in the short term. We don't quantify it that way. Stock market investing does not work that way. And I know people want to do that. They want to try to play on your emotions in the short term and even the medium term, right? By saying that the stock has gone down or even when the stock goes up, hey, you're missing the boat. I, I think it's going to be neither of those cases that win over the long term. I gave you the key to that success during the course of this video, and that is just to buy the stock and hold the thing for the long term. Guys, subscribe to the channel, share the message with those uh, highly on folks out there that you know are interested in the in the in the company. And leave your comments at the bottom. I do enjoy commenting back on these videos. They strike up a fantastic conversation, and uh, just appreciate you guys uh, being with me and supporting the message for uh, what is longer than a normal video. So I appreciate you guys, and uh, appreciate you guys staying with me for the totality of the video. Good luck in your investment future.